I lost my dad to cancer in 2013. And he was my greatest champion, biggest fan, like gregarious laugh, loudest in the room, you know, just confident guy. And um, there was a lot of silence after I lost my dad in my life. My dad comes from a you know, middle-class background, so does my mom, Ambala, conservative background. But he always asked for my opinion, and not in a flippant way, Ki, let's see what a four-year-old has to say, but in a serious way. And that always made me feel like I'm important. I think I was very lucky to have an upbringing where my parents gave me a sense of self, where I was given the ability to make my own choices. I think a lot of girls, especially in our country and, you know, many others, their, their ability to make choices is taken away from them. So I think it's very important for us to raise bold girls, for us to raise girls that push the envelope, for us to invest in the girls in our communities, in our countries, because once a girl stands on her own feet, she not just takes her family forward, she takes her community forward, which in part takes the country forward. I thought that you know, my new life and this industry and my career was the most important thing. But family is, and the people around you are. And having a support system that makes you want to step forward every single day in this difficult ride called life, you know, and that just makes it easier. I'm not someone who walks around with the ego. Um, I believe in hard work and I think only your work can speak for itself. So I used to walk in, I took meetings, I did auditions. Um, and I got smaller roles and I did make them bigger and bigger and bigger and slowly it took time to be able to get to this place. I wish I hadn't beaten myself up as much as I did. When you're young, you feel like one failure is the end of your life or one breakup or one friendship or one fight. You feel like you can never come back from that. And I am a very intense person in general. I'm very sentimental, I'm emotional, um, so everything affects me, energies affect me. If I've hurt someone, it affects me, if by deliberately or, you know, by mistake. If, um, so I think I used to really beat myself up when something went wrong or when I didn't get an opportunity. I was say, it's my fault, I must have done something wrong. And I would like to tell my younger 19, 20 year old self that, you know, life is all hills and valleys. It's never going to be a smooth road. You will have up, you will have down, but when it's down, you will go up. So when you're up, be prepared for a down, and it's okay. Surround yourself by people that prop you up. Surround yourself by people who are genuinely happy for you. Not all the followers, not like the people who, you know, you think are your friends that you may party with, but the ones that pick up your phone call at two o'clock in the morning. The one when someone is sick in your family that will sit with you for hours overnight. You know, those are the ones you collect. Those are the ones you remember and those are the ones you keep for the rest of your life. You just, it makes it easier to have the right people in your life. Life throws stuff at you. And there are times when everything feels like you're never gonna be able to get out of it. Like it's quicksand. Every day you're being pulled down or every moment you can't even see a sliver of hope. And we've all been through phases of our lives where that has happened. If you sit, and you should sit and moan what you're feeling. I, I really believe in not pushing things under the rug. When I first started working here, um, I think that I did not want to be the check in the box. Normalizing my culture has been a long um, walk. And there are a few of us that are doing it and culture should be normalized because children should be exposed to different kinds of culture. Culture is the best teacher in the world. Traveling around the world, meeting how, you know, different foods that take different forms, languages. Um, so I think that that, had been, that became my quest for a very long time. And I'm doing a lot of work where I want to bring stories that are about my culture, my people. And should be out there. I know that actors, we are the faces on posters, so people give us a lot of credit, but we're standing on the shoulders of almost like a thousand people that made this show. When we talk about diversity in America, I think we spend a lot of time focusing on what people, you know, different 
kinds of people, people who look different, but we don't really focus a lot on how we sound. Diversity is different languages yeah. across borders. It's not just skin tones, it's not just features. It's not just it English. It is cultures. Yeah. yeah, it's not English, it's Hindi, it's Urdu, it's so many different languages around the world. And this is true global diversity that's never really been done before. You know, I do believe that people are meant to be for with each other for whatever that duration in your life is supposed to be. And I think that people collide because you're supposed to create on this small short life that you have memories that you will take forward family and and I think that Nick and I had through our lives like these weird enchanted little moments and um, but it's lovely now to have found your person when you and you're alone and you're dealing with what you're scared of you can't fight it because it's in your head and you can't fight what's in your head. But when you talk about it to someone you trust, whether it's your family member, whether it's a loved one, whether it's a therapist, whatever, somehow the power goes away from it. So what I do is I diffuse it. And I don't have the baggage around my feet. I move on and it's done. Just move on, you know? Life is so much easier. You're so heavy, you're never gonna be able to get, rise above the water. You have to let it go to keep your head above water. And I like breathing fresh, clean air. I don't think circumstances or your environment can dictate how you feel. They can contribute to it. It's up to you to decide how much you're taking in and how much you're leaving out. This is not something, again, that I knew in my 20s, obviously. I was somehow doing it because I think my parents just, like, my family just taught me that resilience of bounce back up. My mom says that to me. She's like, you're, you've always been someone who, like, just bounces up and you're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, it was a mistake, I'll, I'll try it again. But if you treat life like that, like, whenever life has been tough, and it's been tough many times, it's been almost down and out and you don't want to get out of bed and you you don't want to see anyone. I grew up in the public eye. So I kind of realized that my best person was me. I had to rely on my skill set. Whenever I was nervous or I was scared, I, I started focusing on whatever was the goal in that moment. 